What's up, everybody? Welcome to Sit Down. I'm DJ Sixsmith. Got some great guests in the house. Jake Weissman, Matt Ingebrigtsen. Hey. How are you guys? Nice to meet you, man. Good, Good to meet see you, too. You. Yeah. Season two of Corporate. Congratulations, guys. Thank, Thank you, very, you much. very much. We were just chatting off camera, just the journey you guys have taken mm -hmm. to even get to Comedy Central oh, in yeah. season two. A lot of creating, a lot of interesting repetitions on the internet. Uh, so, yeah. Jake, let's start with you. I mean, you know, what initially inspired you to get into the comedy world? Um, sadness. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I, I think, uh, I don't think that's what everyone should do. If they're sad, they should go seek help. But Probably instead, better. what I did <laughs> was yeah. I went to open mics and screamed at people <laughs> at coffee shops and bars and basements and yeah. restaurants for years and uh, did that all the time and they made sketches and eventually they let me make a TV show. Yeah, you have a very unique style. You're just screaming at people when you're out there. Yeah, you're like dropping some F-bombs. I, so, I sometimes forget that comedy is supposed to be fun. Mm. You know what I mean? Right. Which is something that, that <laughs> is easy to forget sometimes because it is a grind. Mm -hmm. But um, it took me a long time to realize that it's silly. Yeah. Uh, I was just really just getting my stuff out because I didn't have uh, health care. Hey, so yeah, I was just you know screaming what? at people. You need an outlet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How about you, Matt? What inspired you at first? Um, I didn't have an identity in sixth grade, <laughs> and so I was like, maybe if, I'll, if I'm funny, I can talk to people that way. And then I just kept trying to be funny. And then uh, in college, I started writing for UT Austin's Humor Magazine, mm -hmm. and then started doing stand-up. And then it was the only thing I liked doing, I guess, was... It yeah. gave you that identity. I yeah. think just a lot of times jobs are so bad in general. Right. Just having a job is so bad that if you're not doing something fun, you really don't like your life. So right. I feel like that's like a big appeal of comedy. It's like, Absolutely. even though it is a hard job and there's things that are extremely difficult about it, it's like, we're just telling jokes. You <laughs> right. know what I mean? Like, yeah. no we don't, no one really needs us. And especially, yeah. yeah, I mean, you guys have done it. You guys had the crappy jobs that you went through. You needed that side hustle. You needed that outlet. Yeah. Yeah, and then totally. if it becomes a thing, great. Yeah. But mm -hmm. if not, you know, there's plenty of everyday people that are just doing their nine to fives. Yeah, that's right. And then they're doing something on the side. Yeah, you yeah. guys obviously hit on that with the show, but yeah. right. it's also interesting that you lived it and now you can do the comedy thing full time. Totally. Yeah, we're very lucky to have experienced something and then be able to make money off of that pain. Right. I mean, that's an extremely lucky thing because a lot of people are just not that happy with their lives and they just have to do that. Yeah. Or just don't do anything about it and yeah. they keep going. The they same drink thing. a lot. That's right, so do. it's either comedy <laughs> or drinking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So when did you guys first meet? We met like nine, ten years ago. I moved out to LA in 2010, started doing comedy, and I uh, uh, met Jake in basements and bars <laughs> and. Uh, Not related to comedy. <laughs> just, ra just random just basements, random basements <laughs> in Los Angeles. You doing in this basement? <laughs> um, we should work together. Yeah, and uh, comedy is such a grind early on, and it's so uh, you're kind of doing open mics and just struggling. And so when you meet people that have a shared sensibility, it's such a relief, and so. Jake and I hit it off quickly and yeah. uh, surprisingly yeah. in comedy though there there are a decent amount of funny people. There are a lot of not funny people. Mm -hmm. So if there is someone funny you're like, we're gonna be friends. Right. We're yeah. each other's lifeline. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when you see those people that aren't funny, you can immediately spot it. It's yeah. and it's rough, especially it's in those so early days painful. when everybody's getting out there, right? It's yeah. so painful. Well, I feel you wanna sometimes the best advice for people is you actually should quit. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> you shouldn't yeah, actually, maybe not even You're not supposed to yeah. say that. You're supposed to tell people to follow their dreams, right. but some people shouldn't. Yeah. And you need to be honest with them about it, you know? Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah it's, it's hard, tough. though. We, uh, yeah, when you first start, get into comedy, if you are interested in it, go do an open mic, mm -hmm. and what you'll find is that 95% of the people there are terrible, <laughs> and it'll inspire you, because you're like, at least I could be better than those people. Yeah, yeah, it's like, think of how much bad music there is in the world. True. They're all trying to be good. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, they're all the trying. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of people trying to be funny. So yeah. when did you guys realize that you had something going? Going, that you could actually do stand-up and you were making people laugh. I mean, I you had your sixth grade story, but when it was actually yeah, for real. I think it started, I think like, it, it happens slowly in increments, like when early on it's like I get booked on a show, I get a really big reaction, okay, I think I have, but you are sort of just building your confidence increment by increment because you feel like a fraud when you start mm. and you don't have anything to base your belief that you're going to succeed on, because until like, you get this little thing where like, okay, this person said that I'm funny. Oh, Comedy Central put me on this list, mm. so I think I have a shot. Like, But it is like little by little you're able to like build the confidence to have a career on. Yeah, I'm still waiting for someone to tell me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so initially for you, when did you start to see things grow a little bit? Same thing, I mean, you know, if you've been doing a year or two and you're good, people will let you know. Mm. I mean, obviously there's some people who are delusional, but if there are mm -hmm. comics that you respect that come up to you and are like, you're really funny, they won't say that unless it's true. And so if you get that within the first two years, you should keep going. And if you don't, maybe you shouldn't, you know? But I people, gotcha. there's a, 
It's a fairly libertarian market, I would say, the comedy scene. So like, it, there is some sort of fairness to it in terms of it, funny people will say you're funny if you're funny. They, yeah. they will try to help you because they've all been in your position and try right. to lift you up. You a also bit. can't like fake it if you are doing, especially stand up. If nobody's laughing, right, it's not working. Then you're done. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So like, there is at least a little bit of justice there. Yeah. So. Gotcha. Yeah, and talent ultimately rises too. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean a lot of, yeah, I think so. I think it's a war of attrition mm -hmm. and I think cream does rise, not always, but a fairly good amount of the time. Yeah. Gotcha. So you guys were on the LA scene for a long, long time. Give me like some underground places that you guys started out at, like the yeah. big places now, like just favorite places in LA to do comedy. One of the best shows that LA's ever had that our friend Dave Ross started was called Holy F Word. I won't say it because mm -hmm. it's a CBS. God bless CBS. <laughs> we know that you're uh, a yeah, good bow to the corporation. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, and uh, we actually now run a show called Good Heroin mm. uh, in the back of a bookstore in Echo Park that's one of the best shows in town. Yeah, that's I was awesome. going to say it's really great. I mean, there's what's cool and weird about stand up is that you drive through LA and all over LA and there's all these weird little places you've told jokes in mm. that you wouldn't know about <laughs> and honestly shouldn't exist unless you would actually perform there. Mm. So I'll just drive and I'm like, oh, there's that weird basement where I thought I was gonna get killed <laughs> and I told jokes and it went pretty well. Uh, yeah, and like so told, it's fun, you feel yeah. like an organic, you feel related to the city in a way you wouldn't otherwise right. feel because you've done stand up in people's homes, mm. in dungeons, yeah. in attics, in all these speakeasies. It's cool. It's yeah, like it's absolutely. a way to feel organic. I once did a uh, I don't know why this happened, but I uh, the lead singer of All American Rejects had mm -hmm. a party in his backyard, <laughs> and my friend knew him, and he wanted to just stand up at the party. Wow. There were like 25 people at this like wine and, and they were all party. rich and gorgeous. <laughs> Wait, you did it too, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's they were right. all beautiful. Oh yeah, wow. And um, we got invited, and Jake and I stood in front of a fire pit with this <laughs> mic and told jokes to the lead singer of All American Rejects for 10 minutes. Yeah, and, it went and well. just weird stuff like that happens. I all mean, the that's time. like a peak 2010s moment, right? Yeah, oh, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's I mean, where it was, like 2012. Right. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, there weren't many hotter bands like that at that point no. for a certain age group, so uh -huh. that's one of those stories. So yeah. what, what are some other crazy stories you guys have had along the way? I once um, was doing, we were actually both at a comedy festival in New Orleans, mm -hmm. and there was a heckler, and he was really annoying me. I don't mm. take well to hecklers, I think. Especially if they're men, I feel like they feel like they're being emasculated because there's a funnier guy on stage right. than them. Right. So there's this heckler, and he was really annoying me, so I invited him on stage. <laughs> in an attempt to emasculate him. Which is typically him. a mistake. Very bad right, idea, yeah. would not recommend mm. it. I ended up wrestling him. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Cocaine fell out of his pocket. Like faux wrestling him. Faux wrestling him. And then the cocaine fell? Cocaine fell out of his pocket. I found it and yeah. then convinced him he was gonna get arrested. So he, <laughs> so he left the venue. Wow. Yeah, yeah, that was one of the best moments of my I mean, life. That's the ultimate clapback yeah. moment right it's there. It's like, yeah. I really was like, you're gonna get, you're gonna go to jail for heckling me. And that's how you can <laughs> defeat a heckler. Yeah. Not anything like that that you've come across? No, well, I was there, I filmed that scene. Yeah, filmed that. It went viral because mm. he filmed it. Yeah. And then it got taken down, I think, because that guy was like, don't, <laughs> yeah, don't ruin my life. The guy had to take it down because he yeah. didn't want to get like fired. Uh, Man, the power of video. Yeah. 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 Do I have any crazy sets? Some of them I probably can't tell on this, <laughs> on this sacred <laughs> network. I understand. We could just leave it at that. Yeah. yeah. Jake, I think, topped it. So you guys were doing stand-up comedy. You're starting to mess around with some short films. Mm -hmm. When are you starting to think to yourselves, we want to do TV, whether it's acting, writing? How does that all start? I I from the very beginning, I think, like we always loved stand-up, but ultimately knew we wanted to make TV and movies. Mm -hmm. And so comedy is a, or stand-up comedy is a great training ground, and it's a great way to meet people. And so we met, Jake and I met each other. We met this guy, Pat Bishop, yep. who directs. He's been with you guys for a long time. Yeah, and um, just started making videos on the weekends and at night. And um, But yeah, I think knew from the beginning we wanted I to make TV. I think you have to sort of... It, it seems kind of this insurmountable thing to make a TV show. You're like, a TV show? What is that? And it seems weird to start at open mics and coffee shops and get there, but you have to kind of blindly believe that it'll happen. Right. And the more traction you get, um, it is possible. And there's, there's just so many steps along the way, and a large part of it is believing you can do it. Because everyone who does something is someone who at one point didn't know how to do it. Mm -hmm. And if you're smart, you may not feel you can do something, but you can. You just yeah. have to kind of like, push yourself to believe you right. can It's often it. just a matter of sending like the first email. Mm -hmm. I actually, my manager framed the email that I sent her 
that told her about the idea of corporate because that mm -hmm. ultimately it's it. It's like send an email like I have this idea and then suddenly it can snowball into something that you yeah, never expected Yeah, often the into. original idea you had is very different from the final project. Yeah. You have to get it going and right. I just mm -hmm. believe it's going to happen because so many people are just scared to fail. Mm -hmm. And the best thing about stand-up is it teaches you that in order to get good you have to fail thousands of times. Yeah. Yeah. Failure is so important not only in comedy but just in life. It's the yeah. only way to do yeah. it. You need it. The only way to learn is to like physically uh, not do yeah. it correctly. Yeah. People yeah. tell you you suck. Yeah. Yes. You need to do better. Uh -huh. Oh, good to know. Thank you. Yeah. Just yeah. people be honest with you. Absolutely. Right? Totally. So what year was that initial email and how different was the first idea from what you guys ended up doing? 2015. Okay. Um, and uh, similar in some ways, like the tagline we sent was American Psycho meets Office Space, mm. uh, which is which essentially is what yeah. we made. Um, but it was initially a sketch show. We wanted to do sort of like Portlandia, but set inside of a corporation, like right. sort of following various characters, like, but... Uh, disconnected stories, and then uh, we ended up just <clears throat> discovering that the tone we set and the sensibility were the strongest points, and that a narrative would fit it best. You know. Yeah. Gotcha. So when you guys think about the show, I mean, going into season two, season one was obviously great. What were the biggest learning lessons from season one? Um, well, you know, before you make a show, you have no idea how to make a show. Right. It, no. It's like, yeah, I would love to make a show. What's but most surprising about the whole process? How hard it is. Mm. Um, it's it's endless work and you have to be very good and you have to it's incessant work and it mm -hmm. takes over a year of your life. Probably the most surprising part is how seriously a group of like dozens of professionals take your dumb jokes. Yeah. Like you write <laughs> these silly jokes yeah. and then uh, you get all these like uh, people at the top of their game in a room together and they go through the script and take everything you wrote so seriously because so they have to spend millions they have of dollars about it. and wow. execute it so it's like Oh, you really got to write. <laughs> you really got to try to write something worthwhile because right. people are going to like spend their lives doing it. You and it, you just learn how difficult it is to make something good. You need hundreds of people operating at the top of their craft to make something even decent. And it is a miracle when something good gets made. Mm. And so second season, we knew all of that, and we just wanted to make a better version of the first season, essentially. And one of the things we thought about was enriching the characters. When people watch TV shows, what they really want is to identify with the characters. They right. love yeah. the characters, and they want stories about the characters. And so we tried to do that a lot more. Mm -hmm. I gotcha. And for you guys, you're, you're starring in it, you're writing in it, you created it. Just talk about the importance of building that writer's room because you guys have a great writer's room of mm -hmm. people of all different ilks. So how yeah. did you guys go about building that writer's room? I think it was largely Jake, Pat, and I know the show very well and know we can execute it. And we wanted to just get different brains in the room to mm -hmm. bring different experiences and just smart people. A, a lot of writing is just asking questions and then getting people's like, intel applying to people's intelligence to sort of like storytelling. Right. And so we just wanted really smart, uh, kind of opinionated people to surround ourselves with. Well, and people who are different than us. We're three straight white men yeah. and we created the show and you know, we work really hard and we have a point of view, but then that's why you hire women. That's mm -hmm. why you hire people who are LGBT. Like yeah. you don't, you want people who like think we just have had different experiences than you, so they can be like, actually, that's not my experience. Um, here's something that would make more sense to everyone. Right. It, it's yeah. extremely helpful to hire a diverse uh, group because it actually makes your show better. Mm -hmm. You know, even, even if you're not a woke person at all, <laughs> yeah. it will make your product better if you just hire diverse people because they just know things you don't know. Right, yeah. that represents the world. It also, also it, represents the corporate it's office. It's extremely helpful. Totally, yeah. You know? So. You mentioned before uh, American Psycho and Office Space. You know, mm -hmm. think about it. It's been 20 years since Office Space. Yeah. I think in 99 what people were talking about with offices to where you guys are now. I mean, I it must be pretty interesting to see how things have transformed, not only just from a TV perspective, but just from the office in general and how you guys are going about it. Totally, yeah. Yeah, it's weird with Office Space it, because it's, I think a work of true genius is when it's relevant kind of whenever. Mm -hmm. And I think people could still watch Office Space and be like, that's my life. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. And I think that's what you're trying to do when you create something. I think there's a lot of shows or movies that are very topical or have topical jokes. We try to avoid that because like Office Space, we want something that in 20 years people could watch and be like, Whoa, how did they predict this? <laughs> right, my job my still life? sucks. That's yeah. what you should be trying to do, yeah. I, in my opinion, mm -hmm. with the things you create is something that is like, universal and eternal to some degree. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. So season two, you guys have some guest appearances, which mm -hmm. is cool, mm -hmm. Kira Sedgwick and yeah. some others. Do they come to you? Do you come to them? They know the show now. How does that all go down? We usually come to them, but it, but what, what's been fun is after putting out a season, you gain fans of the show that you weren't aware of. So like Elizabeth Perkins, mm -hmm. who was in one of the episodes, it 
we reached out to her, but she said yes because she was a fan of the show, just well, organically. It's crazy. You just put things out in the universe, and people you've admired for 20, 30 years are like, yeah, you're, you're funny. You're yeah. like, how do you even know my name? <laughs> like, that's so weird. It's kind of creeping me out. No, yeah. it, it's really interesting because there's so much stuff out there to watch now. And the fact yes. that your show is cutting through, it's mm -hmm. even more significant. It's yeah. insane, and it feels like I died, and this is all a joke. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The fact that it's going well. Do you yeah. guys find that people are, are binging your show, that they're watching it weekly? I mean, because it is still on, on TV as a opposed to just yeah. Netflix. I think a little bit of both. I mean, I think we're on Comedy Central, which is like a, it's coming out week by week, so right. I think there's that audience. But what we found is that a, the first season came out a year ago, mm -hmm. and a lot of people caught up with it since that it right. came out. Yeah, so, to yeah. get, because there is so much content, it takes like seven people to tell you to watch something for you <laughs> right. to watch it. So it is like a year later, people are like, I'm finally watching corporate and it's great. Okay, leave me alone. <laughs> yeah. like, it took a year though. No, it's yeah. crazy. We, you know, we'll be here in the office and be like, hey, have you seen this documentary? Have you seen this TV show? It's like, no, I haven't seen yeah. it. And it's like every week there's something else. I know. We've both been meaning to watch The Americans for 10 years now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we will at some point. Yeah. It was funny. Kevin Nealon was here last week and he's like, I just never watched The West Wing. And I'm yeah. like, yeah. you said that in an interview like four years ago. You're just not going to watch it. <laughs> You know, like it's yeah. not gonna happen. And I think I'm at that point too. It's like there's so much stuff. It's yeah. like people I come know. in, you want to watch their stuff, but yeah. yeah. I'm just watching Mad Men for the first time. <laughs> Turns out it's yeah. great. Everyone it's a great was right. show. It's an, all, it's an all time great show. Yeah. 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 And like I've never watched The Wire. And it's yeah, like, yeah. you know, it's great. You know what? Shame on you. The shame on me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so when people check out season two, what's the biggest thing you want them to walk away thinking? Let's start with you, Jake. Um, that even though their jobs might be really hard and painful, that there is humor in it and joy to be found and that we're all going through this universal experience no matter pretty much who you are and that you're not alone. I think Jake said it best. I'll leave it at that. Beautiful. Yeah. Why don't you tell the people where they can check out the show? Watch it on Comedy Central, uh, 10.30 every Tuesday or check it on the cc.com or the app or... Uh, yeah, torrent it if you want to. Yeah. I, don't think, I don't think Viacom wants us to say that, but don't, please yeah. watch it however you can. We just want you to don't see Don't tell the show. Viacom we said that, but watch it in any way that you can. <laughs> All right, there you have yeah. it, Jake, Matt. It's been an absolute pleasure, yeah, guys. Thanks, thanks man. so much. Appreciate it. We'll see you next time here on The Sit Down.